Welcome to this brief webinar presentation titled Clinical Frailty Scale Implementation into eCritical Alberta. My name is Sean Bagshaw and I will take you through this presentation over the next 10 minutes. What I'd like to do is describe for you frailty and how it impacts critical illness. Describe briefly the clinical frailty scale, a screening method for frailty, and provide an overview of the clinical frailty scale eCritical implementation project. First of all, what is frailty? Frailty can be defined as a multidimensional syndrome or state related to aging that has often been described and highly correlated with aging in elderly patients. It is generally characterized by the loss of reserve and the accumulation of deficits. These deficits, which individually may seem trivial and often reversible, collectively become insurmountable for the patient. The consequences of this is that frailty results in patients being more vulnerable to adverse events and adverse outcomes. Here is a figure that gives you some representation of the impact of frailty and function, function being cognitive or physical. What you can see here is how a patient with frailty may be impacted by a clinical event. On the y-axis, you have function, and on the x-axis, you have time. The black line represents someone who is otherwise relatively normal, but suffers some health-related stress or event, like trauma or pneumonia, and is hospitalized in the intensive care unit. These patients obviously have a decrease in their function associated with their acute illness. However, it doesn't seem to cross the threshold of dependence and because they have sufficient reserve, either physiologic or cognitive, they are capable of getting back to their baseline during their recovery. They have functional reserve. These patients are not frail. Alternatively, the gray, gray line represents a patient who is frail. They would have a much larger acute loss of function, again, being physical or cognitive, associated with their acute event they would fall far below that level of dependency you see during their acute illness. And what characterizes a frail patient is that these patients take far greater periods of time to recover, if they recover. Not only that, they often fail to return to their baseline level of function. So in essence, these patients are not able to withstand the acute stress of their event that brought them to the intensive care unit. So what is the clinical frailty scale? Well, it was developed as a screening tool that would be predictive of adverse events and adverse outcomes amongst elderly patients that could also be easy to use in clinical practice. The CFS was developed among participants in a five-year Canadian study of health and aging study. The clinical frailty scale is a nine point categorical or ordinal scale. A score is assigned based on the clinical judgment of the most responsible or treating clinician, integrating all information available from the medical history and the clinical examination. The clinical frailty scale has been found to be highly correlated with more comprehensive and complex tools to measure frailty, such as the frailty index. So here is a visual analog tool that's commonly used to administer the clinical frailty scale. And what you can see here is each category is titled along with the definition. And again, there is a visual analog scale to accompany that. Here is a little bit more uh, in-depth description of each of the categories of the clinical frailty scale. What you can see here is a score of one, two, or three represent patients who are very fit or managing well. These patients are generally not limited in any respect due to their medical conditions. A score of four, on the other hand, screens a patient as being vulnerable. These patients are not dependent for activities of daily living or independent activities of daily living. 
but the symptoms they experience related to their illness may limit their activity. A score of five represents patients who are mildly frail. These patients are more evident in slowing. They need help with day-to-day -day activities, in particular their independent activities of daily living. Scores of six, seven, and eight represent progressive increased levels of frailty. These are patients that need more help with inside and outside activities. They may become more dependent, more disability, more comorbid, more comorbid illness. And amongst those with a score of eight, categorized as very severely frail, these patients may in fact be approaching their end of life and they are less likely to recover from even minor or trivial insults or events. A score of nine represents patients who are terminally ill. These patients may have a life expectancy of less than six months, but may in fact not be frail. So really, using this screening tool, patients would be considered frail if they scored five through eight. In the Canadian Study for Health and Aging, the clinical frailty scale clearly discriminated patients who had a higher risk of mortality five years after entering the study. You can see higher scores here associated with a much lower probability of survival. In addition, the clinical frailty scale score also discriminated patients who were likely to go on to need institutional care at skilled nursing facilities or long-term care. Again, you can see higher numbers represent greater proportion of patients who ultimately went on to need institutionalization. Now in intensive care, as some of you may know, we performed a pilot study at six centers across Alberta, and we measured frailty using the clinical frailty scale screening tool for patients at the time admitted to ICU. Of the 421 patients we enrolled in the study, we found approximately 33% of patients who were admitted were in fact screened as frail, scoring five or greater on the clinical frailty scale score. We also showed that another one third, in fact, scored four, which would suggest they were vulnerable. Similar to the Canadian study of health, of health and aging, we also showed that the clinical frailty scale score after adjustment for re relative, uh, relevant covariates such as age, sex, comorbidity, illness severity, case mix, and hospital site, we found that the clinical frailty scale score in, did in fact discriminate patients who would and would not survive over time. Those with a higher clinical frailty scale score showed evidence of a higher risk of death one year after admission to ICU. We also showed as well that among survivors at 6 and 12 months after their admission to ICU, frail patients had much greater impairment in their quality of life compared with those who were not frail. In addition, we showed that patients who were frail had greater problems with mobility, self-care, usual activities, experience of pain and discomfort, and anxiety and depression compared to those who were not frail. So these data lead us to believe that frailty may in fact be an important determinant of patients' not only survival, but also their long-term functional outcome after ICU. So let me focus now on talking a little bit about the Clinical Frailty Scale eCritical Implementation Project. Why add the CFS to eCritical? There's a few reasons we would like to do this. First, we would like to have a mechanism to identify vulnerable and frail patients amongst those admitted to intensive care units in Alberta. In addition, we'd like to be able to describe the prevalence of frailty amongst our critically ill populations. We would like to be able to communicate frailty specific information between care providers and across different clinical care settings. We'd also like to build a platform to design, evaluate, and implement further interventions that may specifically target vulnerable and frail patients, as we expect that this cohort will grow over time. And finally, we'd like to provide an opportunity to develop predictive analytic tools aimed at triggering consultations with geriatric medicine or other specialized care pathways amongst high-risk frail survivors of critical illness. How do you assign the clinical frailty scale score? 
As mentioned earlier, the CFS score is judgment-based. It uses the judgment of the treating clinician. Providers should integrate multiple sources of information to inform and align the optimal CFS score to, to assign, including interviews with the patient, the family caregiver, and any other relevant persons involved in the care of the patient, along with a detailed review of their medical records and a clinical examination. This may also include an assessment of the patient's trajectory over time or the burden of health services use that they've had. The CFS score is completed by the physician, the most responsible or admitting physician, any critical as part of the physician admission form. And here you can see a picture of how we have integrated the clinical frailty scale into the acute scoring section of the physician admission form given by the red arrow. If you click on this, a drop down box will become available and you can see here the categories from one to nine, along with their title and a brief description of the clinical frailty score. In addition, if you click on the clinical frailty scale tab, a more detailed visual analog scale defining each score on the CFS can be accessed. This will give providers completing the CFS score on a critical more detailed information as necessary. Another feature about the implementation of the CFS score into eCritical is that we've integrated it into interprofessional EMR charting as well. So this will enable interprofessional providers to see the score that was assigned by the most responsible physician. So here is an example of the bedside nursing charting. And again, here is an example of the bedside physiotherapy charting. This will be integrated throughout the various interprofessional domains in eCritical. Lastly, speaking briefly about the implementation pilot project, the CF CFS score has been built, as you can see, and integrated into eCritical. It was released December 8, 2015. The next steps for this pilot project include provider education about frailty, about the clinical frailty scale score, and its integration into eCritical. We anticipate doing this over the next several weeks. We also want to pilot implement, we want the pilot implementation to evaluate the compliance, the quality of the data, and undergo further validation to ensure that we are in fact capturing what we intend to capture with the clinical frailty scale score. We'd like to be able to provide feedback to all frontline healthcare providers about its implementation and inquire about your uh, beliefs and perceptions on the utility of the clinical frailty scale, and of course, disseminate our results. I'd like to thank you for your attention. I'd like to acknowledge the other investigators involved in this implementation project, including uh, Drs. Tom Stelfox, Dr. Daryl Rolfson from Geriatric Medicine, Dr. Dan Zugi from eCritical, Dr. David Ziegen from the Critical Care Strategic Clinical Network, and again, Dr. Darren Hudson from uh, eCritical Alberta. Also, of course, our project manager, Don Oppenorth, who has been very essential into seeing this implementation project move forward. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to contact either myself, Dr. Bagshaw at bagshaw at ualberta.ca, or Don Oppenorth as well at dono at ualberta.ca. I'd like to thank you again for your attention, and we look forward to working with you in the near future.